I'm taking a cake break. Hi guys, welcome back. I can't even tell you how excited I am to be back to making videos. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Abigail. I run a small business. I very frequently get asked about tips and tricks for filming TikToks, specifically TikTok content for small businesses. Um, I was asked by someone on a YouTube video to make a video about this. So this is kind of a second part to the video that I have already posted, which is sort of my timeline and journey with TikTok and being a small business on TikTok. But this video, we're gonna go over the actual tips and tricks. And hopefully this will help you if you are a small business or even if you are anyone on TikTok and you're trying to make high quality content. So here's how we're gonna do it today. I have two sections for you. The first section is gonna be my generic tips. These are gonna be like, I think I have 11. There's gonna be 11 tips that you would find in just about any video if you were to Google how to make a great TikTok. And chances are, if you're watching this video, you've already seen other videos like that. So I'm gonna breeze through the top 10 generic tips. And if you need more information on them, let me know in the comments. The second half of this video is going to be my non-generic slash small business specific tips. These are all in my personal experience and personal opinion. I don't work for TikTok. I can't promise you that these are going to make magic for your account. But these are things that have worked for me and that I've seen work for other people and I've just compiled them in one place. Hopefully that makes it simpler for you. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We got two big parts. We got generic tips, we got specific tips. I'm gonna put timestamps down below so that uh, you can jump to whatever part works for you. And I'm gonna breeze through this first part. A quick disclaimer before I begin, uh, none of these guarantee that you're gonna have a viral video or a viral account or get super famous or anything like that. But uh, if you're looking to just get some improvement, get some ideas, that's what this video is for. So please don't come at me and say this doesn't work. Um, I, I'm not a professional, um, you know, 22,000 followers is a lot, but it is a lot less than a lot of other people who can also give um, opinions and advice on this subject. So let's just, let's just go. I'm gonna move the cake out of frame. I have 11, I'm calling them generic tips. Generic tip number one, you want videos with good lighting. This is usually sunlight, uh, usually filmed during the day is better, or if you have studio lights, you could use ring lights, things like that. A generic tip number two, you want good framing. You don't want your head up here out of frame. If you're gonna put words in a video, you wanna make sure that um, you have space above you for words or next to you for words. Um, and this goes for any products you're showing as well, that you just, you want everything to look good in frame. Number three, make your video exciting. And that is what people usually talk about when people say you want your video to grab the attention in the first three seconds, you want um, a 15 to 17 second video. Now, while I don't agree with that part, I think you can make your video as long as you want. Make sure that it has stuff that catches the attention and then is exciting throughout. Number four is consistency of posting. Everyone says this tip, upload, 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 post, post, post. Like, there was a time where they were saying People were saying three to five times a day. I think that's absolutely absurd, personally. I can't do that. I usually post about once a day, sometimes twice a day if my account's going really slowly, but um, it is and usually does drop an account if you stop posting for a couple days. So that's something to keep in mind, even if you're only posting a five second video that was super quick to make, put something up so the algorithm knows that you're there and that you're working and your followers can continue to see your videos. Number five is hashtags. Uh, again, generic one, use trending hashtags, use some hashtags that apply to your content. You do want to have hashtags that apply to your content if you're making small business stuff and your hashtags like hashtag vacation, TikTok doesn't know where to put you. So you do want, you know, even if you're using some trending stuff that doesn't apply as much, you, you do want some stuff that applies to what you're doing. Number six is to follow the trends. I find this to be a tricky one as a small business, honestly, because a lot of the trends are people um, I don't know, wearing different outfits or dancing or, um, or doing voiceovers that don't make sense in a business context. So while I have been able to take some of the trends and turn them into a business context, I don't follow all of the trends. Um, I don't even see all of the trends, I'm sure. So this is something that can be good. It can be exciting uh, to sort of borrow from some of that content, but don't feel like it's everything you have to do all the time. Number seven is repost videos. Uh, if it's been six months since you posted a video and that video did well, you can repost it if you are really out of options and you have nothing else to post. This hasn't brought me a lot of success, if I'm being entirely honest. It's worked well for other people. I have not done it very often. The only time I did this was when I went on vacation for a couple days and I had 
I didn't have any of my stuff with me and I didn't have any new videos so I recycled some old videos and they did kind of fine but they did worse than they did the first time around so this is a tip you'll hear from other people it's great if you just need to post something I do recommend it if you like really just don't have any other things to do but I don't recommend doing it often number eight is come up with original content obviously people see a lot of the same stuff all over the place recycled on TikTok same voices same music so even if you are using a trend make it original put your own spin on it you want your content to be somewhat original in some capacity yeah all right number nine is stay in your niche I would say 99.5% of the videos I post are small business related whether that is my process packaging um, making art, talking about business, they're all small business related. There have been a few times and a few exceptions that I've branched out. I believe I've done one singing video just because that's something that I majored in, it's something I'm passionate about, it's something I wanted to share with my followers, but I only did it one time. Um, and I did a video um, asking for help for a friend in need at one point, um, and that was a really wonderful way to take the platform and the amazing following I have and to do good with it. And so um, those are the only two times I've done something else. I try very hard not to branch out too much. And there are small businesses that I follow who make videos that are kind of random. And I think the only time that works as a viewer, as a follower, like if you're really invested in that person and they're making a bunch of different kinds of content, that's great, you're invested in the person. But if you're there for their business or for their product or to see how they work or whatever and they're making random content, there comes a point where it's like, okay, I this is not, I'm, this is not why I'm here. And that's not to be mean to that person or anything, it's just that's kind of the way our brains work with TikTok a little bit and with any social media content, you stick with your niche to an extent. And if you're gonna branch out from that niche, you do it in a smart and in a smart way. Um, number 10 is be yourself. Uh, don't try and mimic another um, content creator. Be original. Uh, TikTok, more than any other platform, seems to applaud people for being authentic. Here on YouTube, there's always, hi, welcome, subscribe to my channel. Like, there's, I'm not saying that's bad, but you know, there's a little bit of performing to making videos like this in this context, and TikTok can be authentic and real. So take advantage of that. Be authentic and real. People like it. Your followers like it. That's my uh, personal opinion and it's something that I recommend doing um, even as a business account. And number 11 is another total generic one which is use trending sounds and um, suggested sounds. Uh, I will say in personal experience that the videos that I've done even though they were great videos but I used a sound that I searched instead of a sound in the suggested they did worse. Every single time I do that, they do worse. It's usually because I'm painting a record of a certain artist, and so I search their music. I did that with my Charlie Brown record, with my Dolly Parton record, with my Fleetwood Mac record. I found their specific song and put it in, and TikTok just didn't put out the video as much as if I use a suggested sound. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm trying to decide if I should move, because the sun, I don't know if the sun is distracting you guys. <sighs> okay, we've moved over a little bit. I'm gonna try and keep the sun out of my face um, for everyone's sake and my own. All right, here are my non-generic slash small business um, specific tips. You might have heard some of these before too, but I'm going to go through these in a little bit more depth than I did the last ones. Um, my first tip for small business specific videos is show your process and yourself. If you're someone who um, doesn't like being on camera, of course, that's okay. Do what makes you comfortable. But if you are interested in what um, TikTok likes to see and what your followers like to see from a content perspective, I would highly suggest as a small business showing your face in some videos, interacting um, with some comments or duetting things. People, uh, the thing that we love about small businesses is that it is supporting a person or a group of people. And to show someone my face and say, hi, here's my business, here's my work, you get to meet me, you get to be interested in me and invested in me and the work that I do. And we as followers want to do the same thing for you. So um, even if it's in a small way, I would definitely recommend showing your face on your TikTok. That being said, don't forget to show your work. If you're someone who only shows your face, do some process videos, do some time lapses, whatever kind of work you do. Uh, don't forget to include that. So those might be no brainers to some people, but I think to other people, they really question whether or not that's helpful for their page. So that's my suggestion for that. Number two is answering comments, as in making videos, answering comments. You also should answer comments and interact with 
people um, on your page, but you by all means don't have to answer all of them. Uh, when I first started my TikTok, I tried to answer all the comments and it was just so much work. It was like having a full-time job and I couldn't do it for long. So now I answer the comments that I feel are important to answer and some of them get left behind, unfortunately, but I do read all of them. That's all beside the point. Um, occasionally when I'm out of content ideas, I actually just did this. I make a video that's like, hey, throw some comments in the comment section or questions or ideas. And then I take those and I make a video reacting to that comment and it gives me something to say, to know what people are interested in, etc. Three, using terms like, this is just an example, young entrepreneur. Um, so this obviously uh, applies to the people who are young entrepreneurs. Um, Oftentimes, and it, it, it might feel a little clickbaity, but it's also not untrue, videos that get a lot of views and stuff are like day in the life of a 14-year-old business owner or a day in the life of a young entrepreneur. Um, and this is obviously just one example, but it's much more exciting than saying a day in the life of running my business versus a day in the life of a young entrepreneur. People are like, oh, young entrepreneur, that's cool. Now, I have not tested this, I've not done this, but I have watched a lot of successful videos that use that. And I always notice that the thing that draws me in is that that piece of, of what you are. Like, it works the same way when you click on a YouTube link or something that's, or a news story that's like single mother of four. But I mean, those are the reasons you click on it is because of that, um, that thing that you're curious about. You're not necessarily curious about a business. There's lots of businesses in the world, but you're curious about a young entrepreneur. So think about how you're labeling yourself, think about the terms you're using, what's exciting uh, for people to see or what would people be interested in. Consider the flow, speed, or pacing of your videos. So this is like tacking on to one of the previous ones, which is um, make it exciting in the first three to five seconds. You want people to stay on that video, but don't stop there. If your first three seconds is really exciting and then it's a minute of you doing nothing, you're gonna lose them. Um, and I have made this mistake multiple times and I still make this mistake kind of knowingly. Sometimes I'll have a minute worth of time lapses and I can't get it down further unless I edit it in another program because the thing took me eight hours to paint and I filmed all eight hours and then I time lapsed it and I sped it up as much as TikTok would let me and it was still a minute long. And so I'll post the full minute. In the TikTok world, it's a slow video, even though it's a minute of like eight hours of painting. It's a slow video because I'm, you know, if I don't do a voiceover, if I don't do something in it that is keeping people there, they're like, all right, you're painting. Great, that's what you do. And um, those those videos usually do worse if I don't either have a voiceover, which can, can pull people in, or um, smash the content sort of together uh, so that it is, so that it chugs along. <laughs> I'm losing my brain for the day. Can you tell? I don't know what I'm thinking anymore. In that same vein, number five is time lapses. Again, might be a no-brainer for some people, but if you're someone who's struggling to figure out what to film, set up your camera in the corner of your room and film a time lapse for half the day or an hour or 20 minutes. Um, even if it's just you working, throw a voiceover over the top about what you're doing and people are still watching you work. They're watching the process. These are behind the scenes things. So don't underestimate the power of the time lapse. Start a series. That's number six. Number six is start a series. My uh, TikTok started with the day one of opening an Etsy shop, went through day 10. And then the series that actually did the best for me was the reviewing small businesses and this was before people started doing small business hauls, but what I would do is I'd review a business and then I would buy a product from some of them and then I would do a haul video. And then, um, at least as far as I know, I hadn't seen a lot of those videos and then it became a trend and it was a trending hashtag and like, that's when it slowed down for me, but it worked really well for me at the time. It was an original idea-ish, I mean, it's not, original to like do a haul video, but a small business haul specifically or a small business review. I did like 16 parts of it before I realized they were kind of dying out and then I stopped doing it. But series can be really exciting, um, mostly because they get people to follow you. If you see a video that you like, you're like, great, cool, you like the video. You don't think to follow the creator because you don't know what their other videos are like. But if you see a day one of blah, 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 and you like it, you know there's 10 more coming, you're much more likely to follow the creator. Take a video of every product you make in the same location. Now I'm gonna post a TikTok um, of mine, of what I mean, and I wish I did this six months earlier, to be honest with you. But in my head, I was like, all right, I take a picture of every product for my Etsy shop, so I have a photo of everything I've ever done. So if someday someone asks me for a custom of an old painting, I'll know what it looked like, etc. But what I didn't start doing until recently was taking a short 
four to five second clip on my phone of every single one of my products held up in the same background and I just recently put them together they made a great TikTok and honestly I think they'd make 10 more great TikToks if I'd done it with all of my work because any sound that has a beat to it when you do the like auto sync on TikTok to that sound it just flicks through and my hand isn't moving the location isn't moving but my record is changing every single time and it's just really kind of exciting to watch i was very excited when i discovered it and so now every product i make assuming i have good lighting and ability to if i'm not in a rush i take a four to five second video sometimes more because i just never know how long sounds might i never know what i want to use it for but that way i have every single product in a video which can someday turn into different kinds of tiktoks if you need it to so that's kind of thinking ahead a little bit um but keep a folder on your computer or your phone somewhere that's just clips of your of your uh materials of your products that's what i'm trying to say show new ideas even if you aren't sure you're going to use them i did this when i started making record coasters i also did this when i started making record earrings now the record earrings did stick and the record coasters i don't really make there wasn't a huge interest in them uh, my holiday record designs video went viral because i was like i don't want to make things you don't want so everyone tell me what you want and it had like 250,000 views and everyone commented about what they wanted to see for the holidays and then i knew exactly what was going to sell and i made four designs and i have sold a significant amount of those christmas designs but i let my followers choose and so uh even if you post something and then you get interested in it and then you decide later you don't want to do it, that's still your choice. Um, but at least it helps give you a sense. It's kind of the equivalent of doing a poll on Instagram or something. So I would recommend posting new ideas that you have even if you're not sure how they're gonna play out. Oh, I already said this one, but branch out rarely. Uh, stay within your niche. We're not to that. Videos that are organizing or studio related. This is the same vein of time lapsing behind the scenes, but um, you know, if you have a day where you're not doing any of your usual work, but you need to clean up your space, organize your studio, go to Michael's and buy new products, whatever, wherever you are, Michael's is what I have. Um, those are interesting to followers too. And uh, sometimes I've done that and later I wish I filmed it because I was like, oh, that would have been a really exciting time lapse of me like pulling everything out and like reorganizing everything. Small businesses love that stuff. <laughs> so um, that's something to, to consider if you're, having a day where you're not making products you don't have anything to film you can film smaller things like that as well if you're just doing things that you'd consider like chores play with transitions the transition i use the most i don't i don't use a ton of transitions actually to be honest with you but the one i use the most is where like i'm holding the product i pull the camera in really quickly and then when i pull the camera away the product's complete so i do this obviously i, I do paintings so i'll paint a record like the base color i'll take a quick video i'll i'll pull it into the painting and then when I pull it away, the entire thing is done and it's in a new location and it's, I don't know, it's a cool transition. It's the one I use the most, it's the easiest to film. It's the easiest to film and then decide later you don't wanna use it. So just play around with it. I mean, these are the things that make the TikTok videos exciting. I don't use a lot of filters. I don't use a lot of like the, um, what is, the sparkle design, the spark, the sh shimmer effect. I don't know, I don't use a lot of effects, but I do like transitions and I think they're a fun way for people who just like see my artwork in every video are like, oh, whoa, cool. <sighs> I need more coffee, I'm getting weird. All right, and the last one I have for this is, don't be afraid to show the in-between. And what I mean by this is the days you don't feel like working, the things that we don't talk about as small business owners on TikTok um, as much or anyone on TikTok. I've been very adamant to show the non-glamorous side of business. Um, I made a video once about ha having a self-care day. I was like, I just can't work today. So I took a video of me vacuuming and like, like cleaning up and stuff. And it wasn't even business related. It was just like, hey, I'm taking a self-care day. And I also happen to be a business owner. So that's why you're following me. And those videos don't always do as well, but sometimes they get a good response. Uh, the video that I did that was a non-glamorous edition of my like morning routine as a business owner, people seem to really like that and really relate to it and say, oh my gosh, this is, I, I understand this, I feel this, you know. If that's something you're uncomfortable doing, obviously you don't have to do it, but sometimes the most beautiful parts and the parts where we uh, have human connection and are vulnerable are those in-between moments that, that are not about our businesses and they're not about, you know, us making TikToks frantically and all the things that we're all sort of in this like race. TikTok feels a little bit like a marathon sometimes. You just have to keep going and going and going. Um, but every now and then I like to just share like 
a video that's just like I can't go all the time, you know, and I always debate those videos with myself. I always think, well, you sound like tired or you sound, you know, not as excited as what you should when you're making a video that people want to watch. And I'm like, okay, but not everyone's excited all the time. And I sometimes have to talk myself into it. So it's just an idea if you're out of ideas. Don't be afraid to be a human being. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Uh, you know, your business is something you created. It's not your whole life. It's not everything your TikTok needs to be all the time. Um, so that is my little end to that section. If you have anything that I didn't say, please put it in the comments. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. Um, I'd love to know what other people think. I mean, I had to sit down and sort of go through my TikTok and be like, all right, what are things I've implemented that have worked? What are things I've seen that have worked? But I'm sure I missed some stuff. So I'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say. As always, thanks for bearing with me. The usual spiel, blah, blah, blah. Please like and subscribe. Please follow my social medias if you haven't already. Toxic Vinyl Co. on TikTok and Instagram. Um, your support means a lot to me. And I like making these videos. I would like to continue to make things like this for you. So having the support and the follows is really incredibly helpful. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.